Hi, I'm not a chair expert, but I am clever enough to figure out that these chairs started leaning a while back. And uh, as a retired engineer, one of the things that bugs me a lot is when you have a really nice product like these Chromecraft chairs that uh, have wear parts in them, but they're not made to be readily serviceable and they don't sell replacement parts. So as this problem got worse and worse, I finally decided I needed to take a look, flip a chair over and see what's going on. So let's do that. This thing was leaning this direction and you can see there's all kinds of play that way and there shouldn't be. Um, it should pivot like this against the spring but there should be almost no movement in here on this pin. So zooming in here you can see I put a black line on the inner piece of this mechanism just to see to highlight the movement. There shouldn't be any movement there up and down but I think it's pretty clear and what that means is this bushing in here is just completely worn out. We turn it around the other way it seemed to be okay in the other direction and put some load on it in that direction there's no movement there so that's a good bushing. There's another possible cause for this movement in the chair is that there's a center bushing here on this center post and those are replaceable. Um, the chair people sell them. There's YouTube videos out there on how to replace them and uh, so if you see movement right in here that may be what you need. If the movement's down here, what the, what the chair people tell you is this must be replaced, this whole mechanism. And for these chairs, that's $55 minimum each. And uh, these have been great chairs for a long time, but as old as they are, I kind of hate to put $55 in each one. So I decided to sacrifice one of them and, and see what I could do. So I think I've count up, come up with a really good fix. It's as good or better than new. And uh, it's easy to do. Just about anybody should be able to do it. So I'll show you what I did. Um, one of the ways that they tell you to identify which bushing you need for this is to measure the spacing between the screws that are holding the base to the chair. So these top ones here on these chairs are seven and a quarter. And the bottom ones are six and a half. And the frame part here overall, the sheet metal is eight inches. So if that's how your chairs measure, then you have probably the exact same mechanism I have, and this should really should definitely work for you unless they change something along the way. So this is all I needed to come up with this fix. I think things that just about every do-it-yourselfer has or should have. Maybe if you don't have a Dremel tool, uh, an angle grinder would work, or or maybe you just need one. I didn't have one for many years. My wife bought me one, and I use it all the time. So very simple set of tools. Uh, I'll talk about the bushings some more in a little bit, but uh, I think it's something that just about anybody could do with simple tools. So let's get started. So the mechanism just comes off with these four Phillips head screws. Just makes it a little easier to have an impact driver. Again, the base is not symmetrical, so you don't even have to remember which way this goes together. It can only go one way. It easily comes off. 
And then we need the leg assembly out of the way. So if you just stand on the base, give it one nice little jerk, it should come off. Like that. With the mechanism off the chairs, it's a little easier to see what's going on. But uh, they put this together with a, a solid pin that's like a rivet. Big head on this end. And on the other end, after they got it assembled, they expanded the pin. And that's why you can't take it apart, or can't readily take it apart. Uh, the bushings are in there that we need to get out and replace. Because they probably look something like these. Uh, not very good. Um, so, there's probably many ways one could get those bushings off, this, or this pin ground off. Big angle grinder, or, or a drill, drill them out. But I figured probably everybody has a, a Dremel tool, or should have. So I'm going to do it with a Dremel, and show that method. Uh, first thing I did was cover up this post. It's got a lot of old grease on it. And it's cold right here now, and uh, I'd rather just protect it from all this grinding than have to put, clean it up and put some kind of grease that might not be compatible with what's on there. And then, of course, you, you got to get that head ground off all the way down to this frame. And your typical little grinding wheel, that leading corner always gets broken down first, so to use that, you're probably not going to be able to get all the way down, so I'm just using a, a cutoff wheel to go all the way. There's only, this pin, the expanded part, is only about 60 thousandths bigger than the rest of the pin, so you got 30 thousandths a side, or all the way around, to, to remove, which is only a 32nd of an inch, so if you angle the, the Dremel tool a little, coming in, you can get right down to the frame, go all the way around it, and get it relieved all the way around, and then just start working your way up a little bit until it looks like the whole pin is, is ground off enough to, to drive it out of there. Um, so I'm going to start that and you don't need to watch me. They usually take me about three or four minutes to, to get them out. But I'll start the process and uh, then we'll come back when I think I've got it ready to drive out. First of all, I need safety glasses and ear hearing protection. And then we'll go for it. So it looks like I've got it all ground off of there, all the way around. It's kind of hard to tell, but the uh, easiest way to know is just smack it and see if it'll come out. So I just set it on a, an old socket so the pin's got somewhere to go. And just use a straight punch and a pretty good size hammer because it, it could be fairly tight because it was expanded into that hole. We'll see what happens. I think it moved. Maybe not. Wow, it's moving, but it's still a little tight. There we go. And it's probably going to have to be punched out the other side, too. And I don't have that long a punch, but I have a big nail that I ground the end off of that should knock it on through. And there it is. So that's the old pin and we're going to throw it away. So once the pin's out, we just need to get the bushings out so we, we can replace them with new ones. Um, the first thing you should do is loosen the spring adjustment as far as you can loosen it. And I don't know if anybody noticed on here the crack in this adjustment cap, but this one's not adjusting. So I had another chair like this too, so I'm going to go through the fix for that later. 
but it makes it a little more difficult to get the bushings out. If we can loosen this as much as possible, then you can just rock this back and pull the bushings out. As it is, you've got to rock it back and compress that spring. So I'm going to do that and, and put this socket in there to, to keep it open, just like that. And now we have bushings. Um, this is probably the bad side because see how it's cracked and just it's gone. Um, and the other one, it's not quite open far enough to get the other one. There's the other one. It's still in pretty good shape. It's cracked, but it's still pretty good. Uh, what you probably can see on these is the part that goes through the frame is square. And I think that's another thing they did to make these special so you couldn't find them probably. But uh, what I did was look at McMaster Car online and look for some bronze bushings. Um, the only, find, only kind you can find is, that I could find was round. So here's my replacement bushing. It's round on the outside. Um, with this open, you can measure this opening. And again, my op the opening on mine is square, but it's 9 sixteenths of an inch across the flats. So a 9 sixteenths bushing should drop right in like that. So I ordered bronze bushings, 9 sixteenths OD, 3 eighths ID. These pins measure just under 3 eighths of an inch, just like a 3 eighths standard bolt will measure just under 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to use these bushings, these round bushings, in a square hole and a standard hardware store. 5 inch 3 8 bolt to replace the shaft. The other issue with the replacement parts is if you notice maybe that uh, the flange on the bushings are very much different. The only flange width available on these was, was 60 thousandths or 16th of an inch. This flange measures about 166 thousandths. So the simple fix for that is just these washers from Tractor Supply are 99 thousandths thick, so 100 thousandths basically and 62 thousandths. We got 162 thousandths of, of flange thickness now if we use a washer on each side. And that just is to take up some of the slop. It's not critical at all. Um, and as I mentioned, to replace the shaft, you just need a 3 8 bolt that has enough solid shaft without threads that both bushings will ride on the solid part of the shaft and not on the threads. And for this chair, that's a 5 inch, standard 5 eighths, 5 inch bolt, 3 eighths inch diameter. Um, so, I'm going to turn this back up so it's easier to put, put together and show, and then we'll put it together. First thing is to put both bushings in and they need to go in freely. There's a there's a cross support member under there that's welded in and on one of mine it was it was in the way of these bushings. So I just had to grind the bushing off a little bit, but these both went in freely. I can see that piece in there and it's missing them by an eighth of an inch. So if if your bushing runs into something in there, you don't want to force it in and put it in at an angle. Uh, just just grind the edge of the bushing down because it these bushings are this was the shortest length they had they're half inch long I don't think I mentioned that but they don't need to be near that long it's not going to be effect function at all so if it, if it runs into that support piece in there just grind it off and put it in there so now we can't get the shaft in there with this spacer in here so I'll take it out and this well then one thing I did is I put a
just a dab of any kind of motor oil on the bolt where the bushings are going to be. These are oil impregnated bronze bushings so they they should be good. It doesn't hurt to give them a lubricated start. And then you need to look through where the shaft goes and see if the bushings are lined up with the holes. And I don't know if you can see it, but they're not. <laughs> but that's just because there's slop in the spring. And uh, all we need to do is a little hammer adjustment so everything's visually in line. not sticking in the vise so far. It's pretty close. Kind of tilt it a little bit. I think that's close enough. So with some oil on the shaft. The first thing we're going to go through when we get through this piece of frame is the first washer. So this is a little bit tricky, but if you're a little bit handy, you know, put some pressure on it as it's going in and then when you find the hole, it should go in and then get it on through the bushing. Now it's going to the other side. So it needs to go through the other bushing first and then through the second washer the tricky part again and then out the other side okay. I got something bound up just a little bit but I think I might have to tap it a little. Not going to hurt anything to tap it and help it in. That that big spring in here puts things some odd loads on things. So now the bushings, the new bushings are in with their spacers. If you can see right here, some of the unthreaded bolt is sticking out. So we can't put nuts on there and get it tightened up without some washers. So I think two washers is what's worked on all the other chairs. And then put a nut on there and tighten it up a little bit. I made mine fairly tight and then backed it off oh, at least a half a turn, probably three-fourths, so the washers were free. It doesn't need to be tight, but it doesn't need to be real sloppy either. And then, just to make it so it won't work loose over time, just put a jam nut on it and tighten that up. Nice and tight. It should never come loose. Okay, as I think I said, at this point we're done with the bushing fix. Um, it's ready to go back together if, you're, if your chair doesn't have this problem. But I just wanted to review briefly in case I didn't mention everything about what I used. This is a 3 8 bolt from a hardware store, 5 inches long for this, for this application. Uh, the bushings, 3 8 ID, 9 16 OD, half inch long, 16th inch flange from McMastercar.com. Uh, they have everything. I'll put the part number of the bushing, the McMaster car part number, in the description of the video. So if you want to get some, you can get them right there. Uh, the only thing else was a couple of nuts for these and a couple of farm store washers, nothing critical, and uh, that part's done. Uh, don't know if I mentioned the cost, these were $1.46 a piece, 
So for maybe five bucks a chair, we got like new like new chairs. But on this chair, we need to fix this. So what they have here is they they've molded a, a nine basically a nine sixteen or a three eighths hex nut into this plastic cap, and and then they threaded it on there and then they pinch the end of the bolt so you can't get it off and it's just basically a carry, carriage bolt coming through here and this is what I'm going to use to replace it a 3 8 4 inch long carriage bolt uh, so the first step is to get that plastic off of there and however you choose to do it this one was cracked so bad it came off easily and then there's any number of ways we just need to get that bolt out of there um, looking through here I can see where you could come in here with a sawzall or a reciprocating saw and just cut the bolt in half would probably be the easiest solution um, what I did and what I'll show is if you can see where the threads are smashed and so I'm gonna loosen this thing and it's a 9 16 it's a 9 16 hex like the standard ones but I can't get my wrench in between it's got a washer built into it so I'm gonna loosen it out to where I want to cut it off so I have a guideline I can use that washer as a to help me cut in the right place now this, this one was really adjusted tight. Maybe that's why it failed. Okay, so that's, if we cut the end of that bolt off, and I'm just going to run around, run around it with the Dremel until I get it mostly cut through, and then probably just break it off with pliers. And then we'll be able to take this nut off, and it's simply a matter of, replacing that carriage bolt with a new one. We won't have a plastic handle, but uh, you'll have to adjust the spring with a wrench. I've never adjusted one of these springs in 20 years, so I don't. that's not a big deal to me. So, I'm going to get my uh, ears back on and my safety glasses and start cutting. Again, this may take three or four minutes, and I'm not going to bore you with all of it, but here's the general process I used. Yeah. Okay, I think I've got it cut all the way, almost all the way through, or far enough I can just break it off with my little vice grips. And, yep, there it went. So we don't need that part anymore. Uh, then next, we just got to turn the nut off. It might be a little tight because of those messed up threads now, but it's not as messed up as it was when they did it. So kind of wondered if maybe they made this non-serviceable because they were afraid that if there was a big spring load here when somebody took it apart it would shoot out and hurt somebody or but uh, you can see now this springs already free and the nuts not off yet so in case yours is not like that you might want to watch out for that but it's not going to go anywhere now when the when the nut comes all the way off Okay, throw away that nut. We got to keep the washer, keep the spring. And so there's their carriage bolt. It's 3 8 square up here, just like a 3 8 carriage bolt, but it's a little undersized here and it's a really fine thread, so it's special. They made it special, probably to have a finer adjustment, but uh, we don't need that. The fix is very simple. I think I'm going to. 
just get rid of a little of the, the grindings here. And again, this is just a standard hardware store, 3 8 bolt, carriage bolt, with the square feature, 4 inches long. It's a little long, but it's what works. It just goes in to replace the old one, then the spring, then the washer, and a nut. Kind of get everything settled in where it belongs there. Looks like this one's a little tight on the square feature in the back. So now it's not. And uh, so you can tighten the spring up. I might want to try to get that spring centered in there a little better. There we go. Wherever its happy place is. It'll get there eventually with use. But put a few turns on that and it'll be ready to try out on the chair. And then before we're done, I'll put a jam nut on there and lock it in place so it can't work loose over time. Um, now again, the, the, the adjustment of this spring in the future now is going to have to be done with two 9 16 inch wrenches, but like I said, I never adjusted mine since I owned them, but it's still possible. It's just a little more difficult. And that is the fix for the broken adjustment cap. So we're ready to take this off and put this thing back on the chair. I think it'll just come off. So we're going to put it back on the chair. It's real simple. Since the base is not symmetrical, it can only go one way. Start all the screws. <clears throat> and drive them in. finish them with a hand screwdriver so I know how tight they are. I think they're tight. And then the leg assembly just pushes on. And we're ready to try it out. sitting level. I think the spring is just about right for me so I'm going to leave it there. So now we just need to <clears throat> tighten the jam nut on the spring and we're almost done. You could do that without tipping it over but I'm going to tip it over and tighten it. It's a 3 8 bolt, so that can be pretty tight. And it should never give us any trouble. And then one last thing. Um, I hadn't thought of this, but my camera woman thought of it. Uh, looking at this when we were doing this, that uh, if you have some long-tailed cats running around the house or some little humans crawling around the house, that could be a pretty nasty pinch point right there. So we ought to put something on it to cover it up. I tried the broken covers that I took off and they won't they won't work even if you tape them up so just kind of measured the dimensions and and kind of started looking around the house and the shop for something and in our recycle bin the first thing I came to was this pill bottle of some kind. Nice 
firm plastic but not brittle or anything so if you uh, <coughs> you need to make you need to make a cover that's it's at least this long so it'll go in there and stay in there when the chairs when the spring is extended but not so long that that it bottoms out when you lean all the way back on the chair so if you measure it here add a little to just get inside there and then measure it again when the springs all compressed you can see that what will work and in my case that was right at two inches so I cut this off to two inches drill a 3 8 hole in it put it on there I may end up spray painting that flat black or something whatever we got I put a washer on it too and then I got a nylock self-locking nut with the nylon in it because I don't want to tighten that so tight that I break the plastic and I don't want it coming off now we have a cover no pinch point and it doesn't bottom out so it won't break from the action of the chair so you can probably use just about anything that'll fit in there. It's two and a half inch hole. The spring is an inch and five eighths diameter. So it's got to be in between those sizes. Cut it to the right length. I'm pretty sure a Coors light can would just be perfect. But I only know that because my Miller light cans were too big. And Coors lights are a little bit smaller. So <laughs> Anyway, now it is complete. over one last time <clears throat> close things out um, I think in the in doing this I forgot to say one thing about putting round bushings in a square hole so I want to just talk a little bit about that so you know what to expect uh, when you do that you're essentially putting point loads on that bushing in these two places real high contact stresses and that's why I went with a metallic bushing instead of plastic and what's going to happen is when you load it since there's almost no area supporting it it'll deform or crush so now it has a little flat on each side of the bushing that's enough area to now support all the load and then it'll stop so mine have started to do that I've had them in use for about two of them for about three weeks and when they're unloaded you can feel just a little play side to side but it's even it's not leaning and once you sit down there's no play so that's to be expected and that's that should quit getting progressing <clears throat> once once it gets to the place where it's got enough surface area to support the, the load so I just wanted to point that out in case you think they start getting sloppy. I took one of mine apart and there's some little bitty, just look like witness marks where it's been worn in a little bit. And then I think that'll be the end of that. Anyway, so if your chairs are like these and have the same problem, in not too much work, you can save about $50 a piece. Uh, after my first one, these took me about 10 minutes to do the bushings and about another 5 to 10 to do the spring. Uh, apologize for the autofocus going crazy a few times. I was kind of surprised it did that since I have a great camera woman, my wonderful wife, who I want to thank very much. And uh, this is my first YouTube video and probably my last, but when I started looking into this problem, I couldn't believe there wasn't a YouTube video to help me with it. And so now there is. It's this one. And uh, I just felt an obligation to, to share it since I've learned so much from YouTube videos on fixing things that I wanted to share it. So good luck with your chairs. I hope this helped.